Okay, today is Monday, the 9th of May, 2011, and I want to do a message here on Vesarian, the demented Russian Antichrist. <laughs> now, if you don't know who Vesarian is, V-I-S-S-A-R-I-O-N, you can go to Google, uh, to images, google.com images, or even just to the web or whatever, and type in this Vesarian guy. And you'll see a picture come up of a man who looks like the paintings of Jesus Christ. And this uh, insane man actually is going around saying that he is Jesus Christ. And so I wanted to, to do a message here showing that he is very far away from being the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not even close to Jesus. Um, but he is close to the Antichrist, which is coming. And there are, of course, many antichrists. Jesus Christ himself warned about that in Matthew chapter 24, that there would be many that would come in his name saying, I am Christ, and that they would deceive many. So there will be one antichrist coming, but before that, there will be many antichrists. And you say, well, I don't know if it's right to call him demented. You know, I don't think that that's, you know, really Christian or charitable or anything. Well, let me read you the, def the dictionary definition of the word demented. Okay, it says here the first, they have two different things here. Uh, definition number one, mad, insane, suffering from or exhibiting cognitive dementia. That's Merriam-Webster's Medical Dictionary, 2007, Merriam-Webster Incorporated. Uh, demented, mentally ill, insane, suffering from dementia. That's the American Heritage Stedman's Medical Dictionary, copyright 2002 through 2001, 1995 by Houghton Mifflin Co Company, published by Houghton Mifflin, M Houghton Mifflin Company. Get that thing out there. Uh, and you're going to see from this study that, yes, I believe Vissarian is mentally ill, but I think it's more than that. I think that's more than just, uh, you know, cognitive dementia. I think that there's actually some possession there as well, which I'll get into later. But uh, he is a Russian. Now, I'm not against the Russian people. You know, there are some here. I, I've met a couple here locally. We actually have a pretty good amount of Russians here locally uh, where I live. A lot of them left, you know, the USSR to get away from the whole communist type of a thing and whatever else, which is a good idea. It's pretty bad over there. But this Vissarian guy, as I stated earlier, he is an Antichrist. He's not the Antichrist, but he is an Antichrist, and he is following a lot of the things that the coming Antichrist will bring in. And I don't believe that he is going to be become the Antichrist eventually. I don't believe that. I think that there's going to be an even more slick imposter than this demented lunatic. But... Uh, we're going to get into this study here, and I'm going to show you from the King James Bible, of course, why this man is so messed up. And you aren't going to believe some of the stuff that this guy teaches. If you don't know about Vissarion, you're, you're going to be shocked. And uh, I just wanted to say again, I'm not saying this to cut on the Russian people. I don't hate Russians. I just need to expose this false prophet, okay? And, you know, as I said, there are many false Christs out there, and it's just going to increase in number. Every Catholic priest, every Catholic, you know, man in ministry is considered another Christ. I've had had that in other studies, so I'm not going to cover it here. Okay, who is Vissarion? We'll get into that now. Um, I'm reading from an article here, uh, eternalpath.com. I'm going to put these links in into the description area. But uh, it says here, Vissarion was born Sergei Torup in 1961 and worked as a traffic cop up until his revelation. He started the Church of the Last Testament in 1991, the same year as the collapse of the Soviet Union. It was a desperate and chaotic time for people, and after decades of religious oppression, suddenly thousands of new religions and sects burst onto the scene, all claiming to have the answers that people were so hungrily craving. So, <clears throat> what do you have there? Well, you have communism, and all of a sudden communism falls, and you have people that are 
looking for religion. Now, what would be the distinguishing characteristic of those people? Did they have a lot of experience in the Bible under communism? No, they didn't know their Bibles. So, guess how easy it would be to brainwash these people and to trick them? It would be very easy. And that's what Vissarion has done. All right, now I'm going to read the second quote. Uh, this is from the Guardian, London Guardian. And like I said, I'll give the link to this article so you can so you can read it yourself. All right, now I'm going to read the second quote. This is from the London Guardian. And again, I'm going to give the links to this article so you can read it. But it says here, at the age of 18, Sergei Torup enlisted... St uh, starting his compulsory two-year stint in the Red Army and finishing as a sergeant on construction sites in Mongolia before working for three years as a metal worker in a factory in the Siberian town of Minusinsk. From there, the self-proclaimed savior embarked on a career as a traffic policeman, also in Misunix. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not, but uh, winning nine commendations during five years' service. Job cuts in 1989 left him unemployed just as the Soviet Union was descending into chaos. Millions of Russians were bewildered and craving answers. The advent of the new era also coincided with Sergei's rebirth as Vissarion. <laughs> now, <clears throat> from those two articles, there's something that you need to realize. He was 28 years old and working as a traffic cop when all of a sudden he realized that he was Jesus Christ. Now, if you know your Bible, does the Bible say that the second coming of Jesus Christ, he would come back and he'd work for 28 years and as a traffic cop who then lost his job, you know, then he would realize that he's Jesus Christ? The Bible doesn't teach that. That's ridiculous. Okay? But notice too that Vissarion didn't get this revelation that he was Jesus he didn't get, well, I should say Sergei. Sergei didn't get this revelation that he was Jesus Christ until he was, he was unemployed. Kind of interesting timing there. You know, <clears throat> you're working, you're getting commendations, you're doing good in your traffic cop job, and all of a sudden you're unemployed, you need to make a living, and, oh, I'm, I'm Jesus Christ, and I'm going to start my own uh, following. Uh-huh. But what does the Bible say about how Jesus returns? Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. I'm going to read that here quick. It says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. This is Jesus Christ talking to the early Christians in the book of Acts. Okay, this is before the day of Pentecost, before the Holy Ghost uh, was <clears throat> came down and everything. You have Jesus there saying some final commands to them, and then he was taken up, and, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay, that's important. A cloud received him out of their sight. Uh, verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, when he comes back, he will come in the clouds. That's how he went, and that's how he's going to come. Matthew twenty four twenty seven, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It took Sergei 28 years to realize that he was Jesus? Uh, no, that doesn't work. Okay, Jesus Christ, when he comes back at the second coming, it's as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Boom, in an instant. There he is. This Sergei guy is a liar. Uh, Matthew twenty four twenty eight. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. together. Excuse me. The Battle of Armageddon doesn't happen in Siberia. <laughs> okay? Again, Jesus Christ comes back at a very specific place, a very specific location. He comes back for war, for battle. He doesn't come back in the wilderness of Siberia. Matthew twenty four twenty nine. 
Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, back in 1991, do you remember those things happening? When, oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't 91, it was 1989 when he realized that he was Jesus. Uh-huh. You know, right. Do you remember the uh, sun being darkened and the moon not giving her light and the stars falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens being shaken? Do you remember that in 1989? No. But this is what the Bible says is going to precede the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, sorry, this Sergei guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a false Christ. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Did Sergei come in the clouds? No. He was an unemployed traffic cop. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous. Okay? And you say, well, uh, see, he didn't come in the clouds? No. I mean, his mind might be up in the clouds. You know, maybe he's... His brain's up there, but he didn't come in the clouds uh, physically. Sorry, doesn't work out. Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth set up a commune in Siberia. No, <laughs> that doesn't work. No, in righteousness he doth judge and make war. You see, the Antichrist, when he comes, it says back in the book of Daniel that by peace he shall destroy many. He comes in peaceably and obtains the kingdom by flatteries. The Antichrist comes in, I want to bring peace. Oh, peace, I love. And That's not what Jesus Christ brings at the second coming. Jesus Christ comes and in righteousness he judges and he makes war. That's very important to understand. Okay, watch out for these false prophets. Revelation 19, verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And that name is not going to be Vissarion. <laughs> Sorry. And if you look at the pictures of this Vissarion uh, demented nut, his eyes are not of fire, and he does not have many crowns on his head. Okay, it doesn't work. Revelation 19, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Vissarion's garments aren't dipped in blood. Sorry. Revelation 19, verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Where are Vissarion's armies? On horseback. They aren't there. Why? Why? Because he's not Jesus Christ. He's a lying false prophet, a lying devil. Revelation 19, verse 15 and 16. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, is this Vissarion uh, guy, is he ruling the world? Um, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, not, not doesn't work. Revelation 19, verse 17 through 20. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worship his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Verse 21, Revelation 19:21, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, 
and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Okay, if this Vissarian nut is Jesus Christ, when was this war fought? A very simple answer. It wasn't because he isn't Jesus Christ. Just as simple as that. Okay, now going back to the uh, eternalpath.com article, which, by the way, is just a transcript from an ABC program where a woman went over there to see this Vissarian guy. Uh, we're going to read this. It says here, Deep in the heart of Siberia's birch forests lies one of the largest and most remote religious com communes of the planet. More than 5,000 people have left their families and their homes to move here and join the Church of the Last Testament, which has more than 10,000 followers worldwide. That's pretty sad, isn't it? The church centers on one man. He is known simply as Vissarian, meaning he who gives new life. Uh-huh or simply as the teacher, and he claims that he is Jesus Christ. I had heard about a self-proclaimed Messiah in Siberia, and I decided to try and find him myself. Getting to Vissarian's commune is not easy. From Moscow, the Russian capital, it is more than 2,000 miles and four time zones away. One begins by flying to Abakan, a bleak city near the Mongolian border, dotted with crumbling Tsarist buildings and Soviet-style blocks. Driving through, I decided to ask res residents whether they had heard of Vissarian and what they thought of him. Most people knew who he was, but they didn't seem to like him very much. <laughs> yeah, because they had sense, common sense. Okay, but you can see there, the guy lives out in the middle of nowhere, 2,000 miles out into the middle of, of just wilderness. Now, is that where Jesus Christ comes back? No. Matthew chapter 24 Verses 23 through 26. I want to read that quick. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ. And by the way, this is Jesus Christ speaking here in Matthew 24. I'm reading his words, the things that he said to his disciples. Matthew 24, verse 23 through 26. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now this, the full fulfillment of this has not even happened yet. Okay, the full fulfillment of these false Christs is going to be in the coming tribulation time period, after the body of Christ has left. It's going to get real bad. Verse 25, Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Now, Siberia, you couldn't call Siberia a desert, but you could certainly call it a desolate wilderness. You know, you have people making jokes about it. You know, it's like living in Siberia. Mm -hmm. That's not where Jesus Christ comes back at. Okay, Jesus Christ comes back at the Battle of Armageddon and whips the Antichrist and his army, and then he goes to Jerusalem to set up his millennial reign, and we go, the Christians go and gather the nations to come and be judged by Jesus Christ from Jerusalem. Okay? After they're judged, after the goats are separated to the left hand and they are cast into hell, and the sheep, the people that are left that, that make it through the tribulation time period, that haven't taken the mark of the beast, that have kept the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, Revelation 14, you can read about that, they go into the millennial kingdom at that point. And, you know, most of them are going to be Jews at that point too. But Jesus Christ does not come back and set up his kingdom in Siberia. Okay, just a simple understanding of scripture, you could understand that. I mean, it, it's how these people are being deceived is they don't have the Bible. It's very easy to deceive people like that. Matthew twenty four twenty seven. Again, Read it here. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The real Jesus comes back in an instant, just like lightning. Okay? Now, does Vissarion actually claim to be Jesus Christ? Well, I'm going to read you a quote here. All right, again, here we have the Guardian, London Guardian um, article. And it says here, uh, 
somebody asks him, you know, are you Jesus? And he says, it's all very complicated. He starts quietly. But to keep things simple, yes, I am Jesus Christ. That which was promised must come to pass. And it was promised in Israel 2,000 years ago that I would return, that I would come back to finish what was started. Now listen to what he says next. And this is, these are direct quotes. I am not God, and it is a mistake to see Jesus as God. But I am the living word of God, the Father. Everything that God wants to say, he says through me. Uh, this guy just shows how big of an idiot he is. Okay, John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So how can he be the living Word of God, but not God? You know, the <laughs> He's a pretty stupid individual. But he says here that it's a mistake to see Jesus as God. Really? Does the Bible actually say that? Did Jesus claim to be God? I'm going to read you here <coughs> some scriptures. See, I'm not going to tell you how I feel or, or you know, my feelings, my impressions on the issue. No, I'm going to read the Bible. Okay, the Holy Word of God is what I'm going to rely on as my source of truth. Okay, John 8, 51 through 58. Here you have Jesus dealing with the Pharisees and he says... Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead in the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him, and if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Now look at Jesus' reply. Verse 58, John 8, 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. And that right there is what made him go into a frenzy. Why? Because that is God's, the, the thing that God says of himself. You can read about that back in um where God was dealing with Moses and he told him, you know, he said, well, how can I get the children of Israel to believe, you know, that you sent me? And he says, say to them, I am hath sent me. So a Jew would know this term I am means that's God speaking. Now look what the Jews did. John eight fifty nine. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. Jesus was not afraid of them. That's not why he hid himself. He wasn't a little coward or anything. It's just that his time had not yet come. Okay, he was not ready to die yet. All right, if he had been stoned to death, it would not have fulfilled scripture. He had to die the death of, of dying on the cross to pay for our sins of shedding his blood. Okay, but they wanted to stone Jesus because he said that he was the I am. Okay, that's very important to get that. So, did Jesus say that he was God? Yes, absolutely. John chapter 14, verses 6 through 11, I'll read that. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, there's a good picture of the Godhead, by the way. The, the Trinity is a word there that you can use. Yes, I know it's not in the Bible, but the word Godhead is. The way is Jesus Christ. He said that he's the door. The truth is the Holy Ghost, is the spirit of truth. And the life... God breathes into a man and he gives him life. So there you have a good picture of the of the Godhead. But it says here, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye would have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye, ye know him and have seen him. Now look at the re reply here. John fourteen eight. 
Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? See, Jesus Christ is God. Right? It's important to get. John fourteen ten and 11. Believest thou not that I am the Father, in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Jesus was doing plenty of things to prove that he was God manifest in the flesh, and yet there were still people who didn't believe. Just the way it is. Okay? And you see a picture there again of the Trinity, of the Godhead. Jesus is the body. God is the soul. And the Holy Ghost is the spirit. Okay? That's why the Bible says, No man hath seen God, or no man can see God, because God's the soul. So when you look, you'll see Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's the body. That's why Jesus was able to say, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Right? It's a big detailed study. I can't get into it a lot right now. But what about in the Pauline epistles? What about some other verses of Scripture uh, claiming that Jesus, or saying, not claiming, but saying that Jesus Christ is God? Philippians 2 verses 5 and 6 says, Let this mind be in you which also was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Okay, he was in the form of God, and he was equal with God. And why does it say, thought it not robbery to be equal with God? Well, because Jesus was crucified, he died the, die, or he died the death of a thief. He was crucified between two thieves, and the Jews, the charge that they had was that he was making himself out to be God. He was stealing God's title. That's why they got upset there in John chapter 8, verse 58. And 59 there when they wanted to stone him because he took God's title, which was perfectly fine because Jesus Christ was God. The Jews just didn't accept that. First John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now your modern versions will take that verse out because your modern versions are satanic, but you can study it. Uh, they'll say, well, there were no early Greek manuscripts to support that. You know, there are no Greek manuscripts. And you say, oh, well, actually there were. And then they say, well, yeah, but they weren't early. And you say, no, but, you know, there were early church fathers that quoted 1 John 5, 7 in their writings. And this thing of 1 John 5, 7 shouldn't be in your Bible. It's the Joh Johannine comma, they call it. Uh, yes, it should be in there. It's the clearest verse in the entire Bible on the Trinity, on the Godhead. Okay, it, there's no justification for taking out 1 John 5, 7, unless you're a, you know, working for the devil. 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So 1 Timothy 3, 16, God was manifest in the flesh. But when did that happen? Well, with Jesus Christ, we just read about it. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Okay, so you have three places there. Philippians 2, 5 and 2, 6. 1 John 5, 7. 1 Timothy 3, 16. All three places clearly say that Jesus Christ is and was God. Was meaning when he was here on the earth the first time. And is God, meaning he's still God right now. And you know what's interesting? All three of those places... The new versions, almost all the new versions, will attack those three places. Rather interesting, isn't it? But to just say it one more time, Jesus Christ is God. So for this Vissarian nut to say it's wrong to say that Jesus Christ is God, it's a mistake. Uh, no, it isn't. And if he was truly Jesus Christ come back, he would not be saying that he's not God. That's stupid. Okay, there's just no nice way to put it. Now, the question comes up, when did Sergei 
realize that he was Jesus in his own warped little mind. Well, here we have a article. I can't see who this is from. SMH.com. And uh, again, I'll provide links to this. But it says here, uh, but how did he know he was the son of God? It's interesting, but very complicated, he told AFP softly, hands folded in his lap. Mm -hmm. Quote, I felt something violently surging up from within me that had been de held down until then. Felt something violently surging up within himself? Hmm, that's interesting. Luke chapter 9, verse 42. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him, and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Did you know that when somebody's possessed with a devil, which is the, the proper term from your King James Bible is possessed with a devil, not demon possessed. But when somebody's possessed with a devil, the devil can do violent things to that person's body. Kind of interesting, you know, something violently surging up from within. Uh-huh. Yeah, this uh, Sergei guy, I believe he is possessed with devils. And I'm going to get into that here as we continue. Now, what about Viserion's followers? What are they doing? What are they into? Okay, let me get the article here. Again, we have the ABC program here. It says, uh, the villagers in the abode of Dawn, which is where he live, lives, the Sergei guy out there in uh, Siberia. The villagers in the abode of Dawn follow an almost entirely vegan diet, largely based on what they can grow themselves. When they move here, they give the church their pensions and whatever possessions they may have. In return, they receive basics such as sugar, buckwheat, and flour. No money is used within the community, but they are given an allowance of 300 rubles, about $12 a month. <laughs> Gee, it's so generous of him. Uh, well, there's obviously two very big problems with this. The first is the veganism, which is extreme radical vegetarianism. Uh, forced vegetarianism is not of God. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If somebody wants to just eat vegetables for a little while, and they, they're doing it of their own free will, and it's, it's not some part of some religious system of belief, and it's not being forced on them, okay, fine. But we're talking about here in 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5, we're talking about commanding to abstain from meats which this Viserian guy does to his followers. And you say, yes, but maybe Jesus Christ was a vegetarian. Why don't we look at that? Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 43. Here you have after Jesus Christ rises from the dead. It says here, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified, terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Let me just pause there for just a minute before I continue on here. Behold my hands and my feet. I wonder if this Viserian guy has any marks in his hands and his feet and in his side. I highly doubt it. I wonder if he has any scars. I don't think so. The only scars he got probably was from when he was a traffic cop. <laughs> yeah. The Son of God, you know, Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh working as a traffic cop. Sure. Right. Uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 40. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? 
Verse 42, And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb, and he took it and threw it in the trash and said, You have to become a vegetarian from here on out. It's not what it says. Luke 24, 43, And he took it and did eat before them. He ate meat? Yeah. Jesus Christ ate meat, and he asked for meat in verse 41. He was not a vegetarian. Okay? It's ridiculous. Now, the second big problem that I had there with that quote I was reading from the ABC uh, program is, number one, he forces them to be vegetarians. Number two, they have to give him his their money, their pensions, their bank accounts, and then he gives them $12 a month to live on. It's just absurd. But uh, what about Jesus? Did Jesus take people's money? The Vissarian does. He takes their money and, and, you know, he spends it for the right cause, I'm sure. And we're going to see about that in just a little bit. But what did Jesus do with money? Luke chapter 12, verse 13 through 15. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Jesus Christ didn't care about the inheritance. He didn't care about the money that these guys had. He said, I'm not a judge over you. And, it, and why was he? Why was this guy saying, you know, this, my brother needs to divide the inheritance with me. Why? Because the guy was covetous. And Jesus Christ knew that. And he said, beware of covetousness. You know, he wasn't like Sergei Torup or Vasarian, whatever you want to call him. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 7 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Verse 8 through 11. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Okay? Very important to remember. A Christian is not supposed to mess around with loving money. If you desire to be rich, they that will be rich, you will fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which will drown you in destruction and perdition. That's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ is not going to come back and say, Oh, I want everybody to give me your pension and, and give me all your money and I'll give you $12 a month. <laughs> okay? Vissarian is a false prophet. And remember, what, what started this Vissarian guy's big mission, his big vision to become Jesus Christ? It was because he was unemployed. Now he lives off of these other people. They come and they give him all their money. And we're going to see about uh, the kind of work that he does later on. Okay. And you say, well, what about uh, this thing of these people giving up their money? Well, First Timothy 5, 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and spe especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. A man that gets married and has children is supposed to provide for them. Okay? That's what they're supposed to do. And I want to read you an interesting quote here. Okay, again, here we have the Guardian article. And it says here, Thousands of people, the majority of them educated professionals from cities in European Russia, abandon wives, husbands, and children to flock to the Church of the Last Testament. Wait a second. I thought the Bible said that you're to provide for your own. And if you don't, you deny the faith and you're worse than an infidel. And yet you have husbands and wives and children, people abandoning their family. Why? If this guy was really truly Jesus Christ, would he be encouraging people to do that? You know, leave your family, leave your responsibilities and come here and give me your bank account. <laughs> Now this guy's a false prophet. Okay, he's a he's a very wicked man. Now, do the people worship Vesarian? Is he just their teacher, just kind of a 
pastor or whatever, or do they actually worship him? Well, I'm going to read here. This is the ABC program again. It says, The followers, followers here were even more zealous when talking about their teacher. I sat down with a group of women and asked about their first time meeting Vissarion. And this woman says, When I saw him the first time my soul recognized him, I could not cope with my emotions and my soul cried, It's him! It's him! He is here on earth! Galena told me. It was as if a flood came down from the sky and my body was shivering non-stop. Okay? Now, are these women mentally ill or are they truly, really, truly feeling something? Well, I want to read something interesting here. A portion of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 11, it says here, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Uh, verse 10, To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Hmm, sounds familiar. And to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Is it possible for a man to use occult satanic powers to bewitch people into thinking that he's a great man of God? Yes. And there have been many examples of that down through history where men have arisen and they have very high power devils within them and they're, they kind of emit this power, this satanic power that comes out, and, and people, they feel that energy, lost people, and they say, oh, it must be God. No, they, there's a supernatural power there, but it's not of the Lord, it's of the devil. And these people, they feel that, and they confuse it because they don't know their Bibles, and they think it's God, but they're, you know, it's not. It's not the power of God that's coming from men like Vissarion. All right, now I want to read you another quote here. Okay, this is again from the ABC News program. There was a German man uh, who had moved. He was a uh, deputy railway minister, and he moved to Siberia to be near this Vissarion guy. And it says here, uh, Werner... Explain to me, it's all about Vissarion. I had an experience when I went from Italy. He embraced me very warmly. He took my hands and then my heart spoke, and that was a time when I never doubted again that he was the Christ. Yeah. Feelings. It's kind of interesting because who relies on feelings? People that are blind. And I'm not, you know, please don't take it as an insult if you're blind or, or if you know somebody that's blind. Uh, there are some blind people out there that are saved, that are on their way to heaven. I'm not trying to cut on somebody with a physical problem there, but I'm talking about spiritual blindness. And uh, it's interesting because Jesus said in Matthew 15, 14, Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And you say, well, how can people see? What's the secret to spiritual eyesight to not being spiritually blind well it's very easy psalm 119 verse 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path anybody that knows the bible at all would see right through this Vissarion guy's deception and it's kind of interesting because this woman reporter that for abc that went over to interview this Vissarion guy she couldn't get anywhere with him and i think he wouldn't talk to her and everything he wouldn't answer her questions I think probably because the devils that were inside of him were saying, just keep your mouth shut. This woman knows a little bit of scripture. I don't think she was saved, but, you know, she knows a little bit of scripture. Just be quiet. Don't talk, you know. I think that's what was going on. Now, question. Do Vissarion's followers read the Bible? I mean, certainly if Jesus Christ, you know, if, if, this, if this Vissarion guy is Jesus Christ, he would encourage his people to read the Bible. And we're going to read here from the ABC News article again. It says here, Every day the women pour over his ten volumes of teachings, and five times a day a bell rings 
whereupon the followers turn to pray towards the mountaintop where Vasarian lives. <laughs> okay, again, two more problems that I have here. Number one, if Jesus, or if, if Vasarian, excuse me, if Vasarian is Jesus, shouldn't his writings line up with the Bible? You know, and shouldn't he be encouraging his followers to read the Bible? The real Jesus did. John 14, verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Jesus Christ said, If you love me, you'll keep my words. You'll read, you'll study, you'll, you're sanctified through the, through the washing of the water by the word. It also says in the Bible. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, it's interesting to note too, by the way, before I continue, that Jim Jones also took the Bible away from his followers. He told them, you don't need this book. This book has oppressed you. This black book has oppressed you black people. And he threw it through the Bible. Okay, I have a video on YouTube. You can watch that where some of Jim Jones's followers actually re, you know, retell the story about how Jim Jones took the Bible from them. Um, kind of interesting, too. Another point I want to make here in that quote I read from the ABC article. Why do Vissarion's followers pray to him when he claims that he's not God the Father? <laughs> Uh, that doesn't line up. You see, in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer to his disciples, and he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. I'm not going to read the rest of the Lord's Prayer, but it starts out with, Our Father, which art in heaven. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. You give thanks to God the Father by the name of Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. When you pray, you say, Heavenly Father or Dear God, or you pray to God the Father, and then at the end you say, I pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, or in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the mediator between you and God. Okay? And you say, well, he is God. Yes, I know that. But the order that God, or that the Lord gives in the Bible is praying to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. That's very important. Um, it's kind of interesting, too. You know, you're supposed to pray, to turn to the mountain and pray to Vesarian. I wonder if anyone ever asked Vissarion if he heard their prayers, and if so, to explain them to them. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. You know, I kind of doubt that they would do the, the thing like that because it would prove the that their teacher is a false prophet. Now, what sort of beliefs is Vissarion teaching? Do his beliefs line up with what Jesus Christ taught? Here we have the smh.com article again. And it says here, I have a feeling we are all one family, one heart, said Irina Bassetta, 38. I feel, I feel the energy here will be enough to save the planet from cataclysm. <laughs> okay. Um, Vissarian's followers are convinced that this is the heart of the earth, the new promised land. Siberia. Yeah, right. And the only place safe from looming ecological catastrophe. Oh, brother. How the end will come has not been foretold, but they fervently believe the deep pine and birch forest swathed in snow six months a year will one day soon turn to a tropical jungle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, maybe if you smoke enough pot or, you know, other drugs or whatever, then maybe it'll turn into a tropical jungle. But that's, you know... Not going to happen with the power of the of this Vissarian guy, but it says there how the end will come has not been foretold, huh? Read your Bible. The end has been foretold. Again, you see, this guy's beliefs aren't even close to that of the Bible or of Jesus Christ. I mean, these people are environmentalists. Pretty bad. Read another quote here from the same article. The faith of his followers is an ad hoc jumble of creeds overhung with Russian Orthodox rites and interlaced with green values. <laughs> what a mess. 
The Vissarionites cross themselves with an extra flourish after the cult's symbol, a cross within a circle, meant to signif signify the unification of four world faiths, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Uh, yeah, okay, right. Only two of those there are representative of what Jesus Christ would seek to unify, and that's Christianity and Judaism. Judaism is going to be brought back in line through the time of Jacob's trouble. But Buddhism and Islam? Two very wicked false cults. And we're going to unify those with, with Christianity and Judaism? Uh, I don't think so. Acts chapter 4 verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Peter uh, speaking to the Jewish leaders. Verse 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Speaking of Jesus Christ. Verse 12. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now, there's only one of those four faiths that were mentioned. There's only one right now that believes in Jesus Christ, and that's Christianity. The Jews don't believe in Jesus Christ right now. Orthodox Judaism. Okay, The Buddhists certainly don't, and the Muslims certainly don't. So how are you going to unify them? When right there in the Bible, the Bible itself says Jesus Christ is the only way. And Jesus said that himself there in John chapter 14. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. You can't unify these other false cults. They're going to be done away with. Islam and Buddhism. Again, you see that this Sergei guy, he just he doesn't, doesn't make it. Now, we're going to read another thing here from the ABC interview. Um, this woman, when she actually goes, she actually gets a chance to sit down and talk with this Vissarian, demented Russian Antichrist. And here's the interview. I asked him to tell me some of the principles of his religion. After a good 20-second pause, he replied, The same as all other religions have. People should learn how to love each other. Isn't that nice? I asked him what, what he enjoyed to do every day and what he thought the most important philosophy to live by was. Each question provoked the same long pause, followed by a monosyllabic reply. Finally, I asked him the question I had traveled all this way to ask, Are you Jesus Christ? And here's his reply. It's not necessary to answer this, he told me. <laughs> okay. Um, I asked whether he believed in Judgment Day. Quote, There is a certain time, a certain period of time, during which the destiny of the whole human society will be decided. This period is going on already. He would not elaborate on what will happen at the end of the period of judgment, nor on when that sh would be. The next few questions I asked provoked the same truculent answer. That doesn't interest me. That's what he said. That doesn't interest me. So I finished by asking if he had anything that did interest him that he would like to communicate to our viewers and to Americans. His reply, I am not interested to tell them anything. Their time has not yet come. Now, again, how on earth could you be deceived into thinking that this guy is Jesus Christ? I don't want to talk to them. I don't have anything to say to them. That's ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. This guy is so false, he's so fake, it's it's just it's incredible that he has ten thousand people that follow him. That's I mean it's bad. I'm gonna read another quote here, just the next paragraph down of the ABC interview. It says here, it seemed that the interview was over before it began. I hadn't expected Jesus to be a man of so few words. That's what a secular news reporter said. And of course Jesus wouldn't be. Now she's up there on top of the mountain where this Vissarian dude lives and she says, I noticed a quad bike parked in front of his house. It seemed ironic that he was zipping around while his followers trekked up and down the mountain. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, would the resurrected Jesus Christ, would he need an ATV 
she called it a quad bike, would he need an ATV, a four-wheeler, some people call it that, would Jesus Christ need that to get around? John chapter 19, or I'm sorry, John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And you realize what you just read, or what I just read there? The doors were shut and Jesus Christ appeared. Jesus Christ didn't roar up on his ATV and hop off and come over and bang, bang, you know, hey, let me in. You know, he didn't do that. He appeared with the doors being shut. He just appeared in the room and he had to say, peace be unto you. <laughs> you know, it would kind of give you a little bit of a, a, a scare. All of a sudden, Jesus Christ, poo, he shows up and there he is. Verse 26, John chapter 20, verse 26. And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Again, you see, Jesus Christ is God. For this guy to say, this Viserian guy to say that Jesus isn't God, uh, it doesn't work. Verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. You know, we say, oh man, it would have been neat to be back there in the first century and actually have seen Jesus Christ. Yeah, in a, in a sense it would be, but in another sense, we're actually going to have more of a blessing, more of an eternal reward, because we believe in Jesus Christ and we've never seen him. We have to have more faith than they did back in the first century. Kind of a neat thing there. But again, Jesus says, you know, reach hither thy hand and feel, you know, the holes in my hands, the hole in my side there. Okay, where are these marks at on Viserion? They're not there. Okay, Jesus could go through shut doors. How about Viserion? I'd like to see that. I'd like to see Viserion show up in, you know, the place over there, some place, one of the people's houses with the doors being shut. I'd like to see him just manifest himself in there. Not going to happen. He has to get around on a four-wheeler. Why? Because he's just a man. He's a con artist. All right, now I want to read another thing here from the Guardian it says here, uh, Vissarion himself is spared much of the physical toil. While teams of young men dig irrigation trenches beside his chalet, he whiles away the long days on the mountaintop painting oil canvases. <laughs> what is he? He's a lazy bum. Okay. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Vissarion shouldn't ha not only should he not have a following, but he shouldn't be eating, according to the Bible. He's not working. He's got these young men out there doing his work for him. He's a successful con artist. You know, I mean, it's a pretty good deal if you can work that thing out as an unemployed traffic cop. You know, you go out and you say that he that you're Jesus Christ, and then you live up on a mountain. Everybody does your work for you. They come to your little commune there, and they give you all their money. And then all you got to do is just pay them twelve dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good deal. It's interesting too because most of the false prophets that are out there are afraid of physical labor, and Jesus Christ was not afraid of physical labor. The, at one point they said, "Is this not the carpenter?" You know, another place they said, is it not the carpenter's son? But Jesus was actually called a carpenter at one point in time. Why? Well, because he was doing physical labor before he went out into his ministry. Okay, just crazy. Uh, another thing here, is Vissarion married? And the answer to that is yes. I'm going to read here. Got to find the article. This is the Guardian again. To the east lies Sun City. It is here at the foot of the mountain where their Savior lives with his wife and six children, including a little girl adopted from a single mother in the commune. 
gee, I wonder who the father of the little girl is. <laughs> maybe not, you know, maybe not. But uh, most of these false prophets, if you remember earlier, uh, the, the quoting there in 1 Timothy chapter 4 talks about the two doctrines of devils, the seducing spirits, that they, the thing that they bring is they abstain from marriage, or um, they they don't get married, and then they abstain from meat. Okay, there's a something goes wrong with these people that get into this cult type of a worship thing, and they'll get into sex perversion. And I can almost assure you that there's sex perversion going on over there with this Vissarian guy. I mean, watch the videos about him. Get on YouTube and type his name in, and you'll see these women just wanting to touch his hands and everything like that. Yeah, I bet you that guy has committed fornication and probably sodomy as well. You know, just like Jim Jones, David Koresh, Muhammad. All these cult leaders are sex perverts. And I can almost guarantee you that this Vissarian guy, it'll come out eventually, you know, that he was a sex pervert. You know, it'll come out. Uh, but it's kind of interesting because the Bible never says that Jesus Christ was married. That's an occult teaching that Jesus Christ was married and that his seed and the Holy Blood, Holy Grail, all this junk and the Da Vinci Code and all that nonsense. There's no proof of that stuff. That's all just lies. Ridiculous, absurd nonsense. But Jesus Christ will never be married. Okay, the marriage that he gets in the future there, the, the marriage supper of the Lamb, is a spiritual marriage. Okay, it's the body of Christ. The Christian church marries Jesus Christ, and it's speaking spiritually. We're not going to go up to heaven and all of us become a woman, and then we'll get married and stuff. No, it's not going to be like that. Okay, I'm going to actually be doing a, a message on that in the future about the marriage of Jesus Christ and, and the courtship, the marriage, and the honeymoon. But uh, that'll come in a, when I get around to it. But uh, has anyone ever left Vissarion's cult? Okay, I'm going to read another quote here. We're getting close to being done. Been a long study, I realize, but getting close to being finished with it here. Uh, there was a, a guy here, Alexander Dvorkin, a Russian Association of Centers for Religious and Sectarian Studies. And he says... Here it says that uh, he warned that Vissarion held total sway over his followers who now live in the year 49 of a new calendar set to his lifetime and celebrate his birthday, January 14th, 1961, in place of Christmas. <laughs> wonder what's going to happen if this Vissarion guy dies. Interesting. In the 1990s, some of Vissarion's devotees died either by suicide or due to the harsh living conditions and lack of medical care. Ticks and other biting insects are a major problem, and a large number of Vissarion's adherents have been infected with Lyme disease. Well, that shouldn't be a problem, because Jesus Christ could heal people. I wonder why Vissarion can't heal people. Huh. Not all his followers have such positive stories to tell, and one-time acolyte Mary Kaprinskia, uh, who now works as a journalist in Moscow, spoke bitterly of her former guru. I was romantic, she said by telephone, but there was a lot of death there at the start. Many of my friends, talented people, were in a bad way there, like fish on land. His attempt to become God was not crowned with success. Now he is like a feudal lord and his followers are his peasants. And that's it. You know, he's, he's just a, a false prophet. That's all he is. He's a con artist. But you say about this thing, you know, people dying there with this Vissarian guy. Did anybody ever die when Jesus Christ was here? No. Nobody actually ever died in Jesus Christ's presence. John chapter 11, verses 21 through 26. Let me read that quick. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 
And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And of course, you can read the story there in John chapter 11 of how Jesus Christ raised um, Lazarus from the dead. And it's kind of an interesting picture there too, by the way. Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. And it says, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. There you have the dead saints. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. There you have living saints at the rapture. The dead in Christ rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. There you have it. Okay, so Jesus Christ did teach the rapture. Okay, that's another study. I can't get into that whole thing there. But notice, nobody died in Jesus Christ's presence. Why are people dying in Viserion's presence? Why? Well, because, again, Viserion is a false leader. All right, one more thing here I want to read from The Guardian. Uh, talking about some of these people that follow Viserion. It says here, the mood is cheerfully apocalyptic. One of the men says, uh, Have you not heard, laughs Igor as he guides us through the swamp, a comet is going to smash into the earth next year. So there you have a prophecy. You say, oh man, in 2012? No, actually, this article was written in 2002. Where was the comet that smashed into the earth in 2003? Didn't happen. Why? Because these people are false. Viserion, I mean, I don't know, probably the guy got the prophecy from Viserion, and he said, in 2003, there's going to be a comet that smashes into the earth. Uh, well, it didn't happen. Why? Well, because he's false. He's just a con artist. And I'm sure he came up with some kind of a reason why it didn't happen. Uh, just really, really bad. Now, let me conclude here. Why was this study important? You might be asking that question. Why would you take your time, Brian, to make a study like this? Well, because someday the real Antichrist is going to show up and the whole world's going to follow him. Not just follow him, they're going to worship him. And people need to start realizing, and we, need, we as Christians, we need to put out information. Okay, the body of Christ leaves before the Antichrist shows up. You can listen to my other studies on that. But we as Christians need to have material out there that the lost can hear that these are the signs of what a false Christ is. You see, this Viserion guy is a nut, and we can kind of laugh about him and say, oh man, what a crazy, what a, what a weirdo, you know, what a demented man. But there are a lot of people, 10,000 people following the guy. And see, when the Antichrist, the actual, the real Antichrist shows up, the news media is going to take him, and they'll turn him into a god. Literally. And see, the the news media is not doing a whole lot with this Vissarian guy. But if they did, if they would take this man, they could film things and they could do things with him and put out propaganda pieces and they could turn him into Jesus Christ on earth. And they could, he could have millions of followers if he could get the mainstream media behind him. Now, I don't think that that's going to happen because I don't think he's the real Antichrist. But when the real Antichrist shows up, the whole world is going to worship him. They're going to go out and they're going to follow the man. And it's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad. And so, if you know of any of people that are falling for this kind of nonsense, send them this message. Um, but even for you yourself, you need to realize, don't ever fall for this false image of Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, Vissarion's the extreme. Most Christians aren't going to fall for him. But a lot of Christians are falling for the New Age Christ, which is being preached in most churches today. I recently heard a sermon by a Brother Greg Miller, and he said that the Jesus preached in most churches is an effeminate devil. And that's absolutely true. Most people, their their perception of Jesus is very much like this Vissarian guy. He's a nice, warm man, and he's gentle, and he speaks so kind. And he would never, 
you know, he, he just wants to see people come together. That's not Jesus Christ, folks. Jesus Christ is going to be coming back as a man of war to execute righteousness, judgment, and wrath upon the world that has rejected him and his word. That's Jesus Christ. Do not fall for this new age Christ, this Christ that's just this lovey, nice, warm, fuzzy, teddy bear kind of a personality. That's not Jesus. You need to keep your beliefs centered upon God's word, founded in God's word. Hold fast the form of sound words. Okay, we read that in our uh, Bible study last week. It's in 2 Timothy chapter 1. You are to hold fast this form of sound words. You need to know your Bible. That's so very important. That's why these people were deceived. That's why they fell for this Vissarian guy. Because they don't know their Bible. If they knew their Bible, they would have picked him out. They would say, hey, you're not Jesus Christ. If people out there in, in, in Jim Jones's church, if they had known their Bibles, they wouldn't have gone to the terrible death that they went to. David Koresh. I don't agree with what happened to the Branch Davidians down there, what our government did to those people. But the point is, those people were stupid. They were foolish for following David Koresh. And he was claiming to be the Lamb of God. Okay? Very wicked man. It's a whole other study. But when you have the Bible taken from you, you can no longer discern between good and bad. That's why I fight so hard for the King James Bible. Because that's the key to keeping people right with God. And when you have your King James Bible taken from you, and don't let anybody ever take it from you, if it's made illegal, you hide it. Don't give it in. Don't you ever, ever, ever give up your King James Bible. Never do that. Okay, that would be just stupid. I mean, Christians down through the centuries have been persecuted by governments, tyrannical governments. Don't ever submit yourself. Submit when they are doing right, when they're doing good. But when a government comes along and they say, you can't have the Bible, you can't witness, you can't be against sodomites or whatever else, you have a responsibility as a Christian to disobey. Okay, don't ever give up your King James Bible. No way. Don't ever give it up. Because if you do, you will end up, or you could end up, falling for some very serious lies and deceit. And you need to know your King James Bible. These verses that I gave you, you need to look them up. You need to listen to them. Paul's the thing. Follow along in your Bible. All the messages that you hear from Bible Believers Fellowship or from anybody else, you need to look those scriptures up and make sure that you're not being lied to. Okay, it doesn't take very much perversion of scripture to be able to teach false doctrine. All right, so that's going to be it for this study. Um, went a little bit long there, but there's a lot of material to cover. Uh, watch out. Deception is only going to continue to increase. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse until the Lord takes us out of here, hopefully soon. And uh, so that's going to be it for the study. Thank you so much for listening.